Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. And as you can see, we're in a different setting. I redid this room. It is now the lightest room in the house and I wanna try and podcast from here. Maybe, and hopefully, you will be able to see some of the yarns and colors a little bit better. Oh, and worm. See, when I sit here, I have this little booger. He got his shots yesterday. Yes, he did. And so his little back leg, he thinks he's dying and he just adorable. <laughs> he um, actually slept with me and this is not something I condone or do normally, but he slept with me um, in the bed this morning for about an hour. Let's see if we can get him in frame. Um, anyway, he did really well, but I normally don't let him sleep in the bed. He normally just my lap dog. Who is that? Do you see yourself in there? Huh? Do you see yourself in there? Who's that? Who's that? Who is that? Who is that? <laughs> Ain't not sure who that is. Okay. Get down and let's get with it. Okay. So, um, we are going to go to in the chapel with Proverbs 23, 7. And it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So in other words, it doesn't matter what you look like, what you're doing, as long as you have a right heart or a godly heart, you're good to go. Um, sometimes I have a godly heart, but sometimes I forget to rely on him instead of the world if that makes sense so um just trying to get back to relying on him and get a little bit more stability in my life <laughs> just saying okay so i am trying a new setup so i've got things struggled around and i've got some things to talk about today um so first totally hooked um now i have had to put the tote if you remember worm can get into it so I've got it all here at my feet and we're gonna try it thought about um, doing it on the couch that's in this room but the problem is is the Sun is behind me and it makes it look bad it, it doesn't you know this way the just light is coming in there went one of my hooks that's okay so first off I'm totally hooked I finished this one and you can see those colors a whole lot better in here I really like that um, this is you're seeing more of what it looks like and i do think the light colors on the walls help because it kind of gives it that white so there it is um now i am making two of these if you remember this is the thread yarn and i haven't woven my end i have one end to <laughs> you know i'll wait till like the last minute before i give these away to do that so yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well so I finished that one um, and I did work pretty hard on it uh, that was my main focus this week was that one and then once I got done with that one I started this one okay let me oops I'm doing it upside down there we go so now I'm doing this one this is the same thread yarn that came with that kit for that other um, scarf that I didn't like the way it worked out. Now, uh, that is the only thing totally hooked that I have. But in all honesty, I don't remember um, what I showed you. I know I showed you five of these. I was working on cows. And I have six done so I don't know which one I left out so I've got the ribbed one and know that the ends aren't woven on. I've got the stripy one just the tan one another ribbed one that's blue I've got the headband which I have all these ends I probably won't do stripy again on those too many ends to weave in and I have the white one um, so one of those <laughs> you haven't seen completed the others you have I just don't remember which one <laughs> so 
Um, that is all there is for Totally Hooked. Uh, now, I will say this. Uh, I don't hate this yarn, this thread stuff, but I have found another problem with it, and I've managed to work it out each time. But where the color changes happen, okay? So literally, this is four strands of thread. When it comes to a certain section, I don't know if you can see that there are three yellows and a purple in there. Oh yeah, in this room you can see. Okay, so where they change colors, it's just knotted. Um, they just stop with that thread, and I'm looking to see right here. You can see where it started. Um, very clearly, to be honest with you. Or at least I can. So, this stitch right here. Let me turn it around this way because you really can see it here. These two stitches right here. In between there, there is a knot. This one is all yellow. This one right here starts the first purple. Um, oh, I'm sorry. There's... It's three yellows and a, a light green right there in that one. And then there's the the purple starts right there. So what they've done is they, they stopped the one strand of green and they would put it uh, to a purple. And they just knot the two together, which is not, fun, not bad. It hides right in. The problem is, is then uh, twice now I've found... That when they stop and knot it together, um, one of these, and I'm just going to show you, one of these other ones has gotten like a bubble in it like this, so that when you're crocheting, you actually have to move that little bubble all the way down. Now, eventually it works out, okay? I've gotten them worked out. Uh, you'll find another little spot and it slowly works out sometimes it'll get a little bigger and then it'll get a little tighter you know um I get it but it slows you down and it makes it a little bit more you really got to you you've really got to pull these together and then crochet and you do it and you work in sections until that bubble is gone now I've got it. There's one that's a little loose, okay, but it's kind of worked out of the thing now. And each one of these has had at least one in there. This one's had two. So this is the same yarn. I'm just doing it backwards. So as I go, it's going to get more purpley then do the and it'll end with the blue at the bottom so it's just opposite reverse of this i just started from the outside and so it's going to go like this the only thing i did figure out is the green and the yellow are reversed on this ball too so yeah i don't know why it's not even the same but see this ends in yellow and then goes green and then from the green to the purple so this one goes green to the yellow, and then the yellow goes to the purple instead of the green going to the purple. So it's the same yarn. It came in the same kit. Just going to look a little bit different, and that's okay with me because these two are Christmas gifts for people that know each other, so there'll be just enough difference that they'll be able to tell. And I do think, you know, it's just going to be, the other one's going to look like that, only backwards. So... I have that one and I've gotten that one finished and I've gotten this. Now I did count there's 12 of these, um, I call them rows, but they're not, 12 of the center pieces. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I am halfway done, but not really because they're going to get longer as the edges go out. So, yep, this one is well on its way and yeah so i've been working on these trying to get them done my goal is to have christmas done by october like everything so um yeah uh 
I don't know where this is going to fit in because I'm just going to put it in here. But, oh, let's back up, back up. So I have, I also started this because I thought it would make a cute Christmas gift. And it's the bag. Um, and basically it's three squares triangle. Like the bottom is here and it, it like an envelope shaped bag. So this is working up and you can actually see the colors in this yarn. And let me see. There you go. So you now can see that they're, and, and this room is making them look a little bit paler than the other room. <laughs> the other room didn't show true, but this, um, let's see if it'll focus. There we go. It looks a little bit paler. It's a little bit brighter than that. Um, but I like the way it's working up. And it is a simple little pattern. That's probably worked up right there. That's probably true color. Okay. So I've got three squares to make. I've been working on this one. Um, and I am working on, I'm still working on cowls. Okay. Uh, I have this one. I have my, my yarns are still attached. So, and that was the hook that went crashing down. So I made this that doesn't look like much of anything right now. I've got to weave in this. I cut it. I even have to detach it from the yarn. Okay. So I left a long tail so that I could, oh, so that I could sew it together. And I was going to show you how to make that fancy little twist, but now I'm going to have to fix my thing here. Hold on. All right, so for this one is going to be a headband with the little um, twist in it, like, ugh. okay, so it's going to look like this, only it's wider, um, but they do stretch, and they, trust me, they stretch a lot, um, so yeah, now the key to making this little uh, twist here is super simple. Um, pretend like the gray isn't there and that my thing here is, this is my tail, okay? Pretend my hook is there. So the easiest way to do this is you fold this in half and you fold this in half, you slide them together and then you simply stitch that up and it turns out to be that little, I call it a knot, but it does that cute little poof and white's not showing up very good um, in the center. See, it'll look like that. So this one is gray and white. Remember I'm making these from scraps, uh, things that are left over from other kits. Uh, that one kit that has it had the mittens. They're just really bulky yarns. So I'm using those. Um, but yeah, I've got those done. I When I finish that headband, that makes me at seven and I need 10. So uh, I did take some time. And like I said, I don't know where this fits in, but um, I'm just going to show you. I wrote out my Christmas list that I have to do. Okay, I've got the house on one side and I've got work on the other. So I've decided that Tori is going to get the little blue shrug that I made um, this year. Roommate's mom is going to get that gray poncho with that infinity scarf. Roommate's dad is going to get the rug. And then RJ's girlfriend is going to get that red poncho that I made. So that just leaves me with roommate, which it's hard to work on roommates if they're here. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, RJ and my daughter's other half, I don't know what I'm going to do for them. I'm having trouble figuring out my men things. So uh, that's all I have left to do for that. I'm thinking that um, Tori, my daughter's uh, other half, a beanie type cap, a nice wool 
beanie would do him well. Um, roommate, I don't know what I'm going to do for roommate. It needs to be something great, but I'm hoping to have everything done super quick. This is August, so I'm, I'm really hoping by the end of August to have everything done that I already know and then start something for roommate, but I don't know what. So that'll give me a couple of months to do something decent for roommate. Um, at work, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten uh, girls, females. I shouldn't say girls because they're all women um, that work at the office. And that's who I'm doing the ten bags, the ten cowls, and then I'm going to put ten handmade soaps in there. Then they can just trade whoever wants whatever thing. Um, there are two doctors, two veterinarians, and an uh, office manager, and they are the ones that are getting these. Uh, the third one is the one that I, are, I have already made that I had no one in mind for. It has a little bit of glitz in it. So, yeah. Then uh, we have a dog groomer, which is a male, and I'm thinking a beanie hat type thing uh and other than that i'm done I, I thought about making him a scarf but i'm really thinking that the beanies because the men here really don't wear scarves they just don't so i'm thinking maybe more of a beanie a tight woven tunisian really tight fitting beanie for them so yeah christmas is well on its way and that was my goal this year to have it all done and make everybody something. Uh, so the other thing that I took time to do is I'm gonna take this out because I redid it. You know how I like to kind of be organized, but I got tired of once I get done with all these kits, I have all these papers. You know, the actual patterns. So I took time to organize them. I've put, and I've got quite a few so far. Uh, but the sections that I have are the blankets, I've got scarfs, then I've got accessories and sets because that's what's come so far. And I have some more um, dividers if I need to make. So, and I kind of thought this is, you know, the way to do it is I can do the sets and then, you know, but I still have, I also thought about doing it, what I have made and what I haven't done yet, because some of them like this one, I plan on making that shawl. Okay. This is probably a better picture. There it is. Um, just cause the plastics on it. I thought about making that shawl but I didn't like that's where that thread yarn came from I didn't like it so the other thing that I have tucked back in here is I've got the kit that started it all the blocks so yeah the sampler blanket that I made last year um so yeah I'm doing all right with that like I said I like being organized and that and so I did take time to put that in there all right, on, where are we at? So we've done totally hooked in the basket. The blue and green sh uh, scarf, I plan on getting that one done too. Um, I'm trying to get as much out of my basket as I can. Um, I just wanna have the geo, that mindless knit poncho and the summer shirt. I've gotta get it done. So, all right, I don't have anything in the pots or on the wheel in the fields um i went to one it's just too hot to go to farmers markets and nobody's really out there so yeah i've been shopping for uh grocery just at the grocery store fruits and vegetables um me and the office manager are keeping a food journal and we're just trying to eat better it's not about if we lose weight great okay but it's about her goal is to lose weight 
my goal is just to eat better. Um, I'm snacking a lot. It's I come home at lunch and I just have um, more of an opportunity to snack and I can snack at my desk. Whereas before my job, I wasn't able to do that. So in the fields, it's kind of turned into eating better. <laughs> so you might hear stuff there. Uh, her and I are trading recipes too. So um, in RJ's world, so he's gotten a replacement truck. It's not as good a truck and he's the white truck is going into a shop um i believe he said monday so the truck fiasco still isn't taken care of the farm house remember the chimney blew down and all that they're fighting with insurance the insurance is supposed to just cut a check and then them go get it fixed well, if it costs more than what the insurance says, that's when we're going to have a problem. So, uh, anyway, they're dealing with all of that, or RJ is. Um, and he's been doing okay. His stress level is kind of calming down a little bit. He's got a way to get around. Uh, he brought my car back. And I don't remember if I told you a couple weeks ago my car was acting up. And so, it's a crank shaft sensor which is super easy to replace it's a $40 part so um, yeah it is sitting until the part comes in the parts on order no one had it here so it's ordered just waiting for it to get here then it literally is this thing that you unplug from one end unplug from another and plug the new one in that's it so but apparently it can mess up all your electrical because it doesn't um, start everything right and it doesn't register that the car is going so you don't have any air conditioner you don't have half your electrical system you don't have your tachometer you don't have it's like hmm so yeah that's going on but i'm just waiting on parts for it so honestly i think i have raced through and covered just about everything just because i've been trying to get everything done and off my hooks and get Christmas done so and if you have anything that is super amazing that I could make for a roommate let me know because that one it's hard to work on it when roommates gonna kind of see it so I want to be able to make it in pieces and not let them really see the completed because I can put it all together, you know, or whatever. So, anyway, and a scarf and a hat, that's not going to cut it. I want a nice gift for roommate. And if you remember last year, I did the blanket, and it wasn't put together in time for Christmas. So, <laughs> nothing that big, okay? <laughs> Something great, but not that big. So, anyway... All right, I think I have covered just about everything. Um, if anybody has experimented with the stuff that I talked about last week, oh, there is one more thing. Um, and it's in the farmhouse. Uh, Warren went to his first fiber festival. And I was quick to remember why I quit going to that fiber festival. So, um, and Gora Jane was vending down there at fiber christmas was it fiber christmas in july anyway it's in kellyville oklahoma and they had some amazing vendors there i didn't purchase anything for the simple fact that i've got plenty of wool you guys know i've got like two pounds that i need to get spun up I've got pounds and pounds of fleece I need to get done. So I wasn't going down there to look at that. I was going down to just look. And Jane had said, hey, come by and see me. So it was just a fun little thing to go out and do. And that was the first um, event that RJ and I had ever vended. Um, that kind of got our feet in the door. You know, or where we got our feet wet, I guess you'd say. And uh, anyway... I uh, 
I went down there. I took worm. I left straight from work. was still in my uniform and stuff. And I went to work. Um, I mean, I went from work to the Fiber Festival. And uh, I had worm there. And he was okay with other people as long as he could see me. He wasn't having too much of it when you couldn't when he couldn't see me he'd squirm and want to get away but he did really good no accidents went outside to go potty the whole thing he just kind of stayed in my arm I do need to get him a halter and get him on a leash because that way I feel like he could run around and be at my feet a little bit more um, train him to stay with me he stays with me here around my feet but he's very secure here so and at the office He's very secure at the office. Um, but everybody goes and loves on him and plays. He knows all the girls. It, it's like his second home. So uh, we actually laughed and joked. One of the girls, we had a really bad day at the office, and everybody comes up and loves on a puppy. How does a puppy not make things better? It does. So one of the girls picked him up, and she was loving on him, and I got busy, and I turned around. She's gone, and I can't find him. Well, she had taken him with her. She carried him off. And I said, I'm going to get you guys tokens to leave on my desk when you take my puppy. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, he's really comfortable there. As a matter of fact, we've got construction going on. So he is in a cat kennel that looks out onto my desk. He can see me the entire time. He doesn't like being there, but he also, there's people coming in and out of that room. It He's in a kitty condo, is what they call it, and it's two, and he's got a little door he can go through, and he's got his food and his potty pad on one side, and then he's got his blankie and his toys on the other, and he's like a little vulture, and he just watches, and if you come in, he watches you, <laughs> so yeah, the office is getting a facelift, I failed to, to mention that, but anyway, so back to the fiber festival, Worm is very at home, as long as he can see me, and he did fine, um, but I walked around, I talked to uh, our old shearer's wife, the Danny, that used to come out and shear for us years ago when RJ was young and learning, and uh, talked to his wife, and she just talked about the puppy, didn't, hey, how you doing, didn't even act like she knew me. She's just like, cute puppy, but, you know, she made it a point to say something to me, but not very friendly. And I've never done anything to her. We just didn't call Danny to come shear the next year because it took him forever to get there. And it was big. If you remember way back, it was a big thing. And, uh, yeah. So, um, we took to shearing ourselves. And we do did four or five at a time. One, you know, every evening when it was cool. And that's how we did it for years after that. So... I don't know I don't know just don't know she wasn't super friendly she wasn't hey how are you um, one vendor looked at me and gave me a big old hug I mean we had our masks on and stuff and gave me a hug and she's like how have you been um, she's working on her doctorate so this will be her last year vending until she's done she's going for another degree uh, which is fine I told her, great, you know, happy to hear it. Uh, so she was closing out. She didn't have a whole lot to vend, but she had, you know, enough. And she's marked everything down. And she's like, I just need to, I'm just not going to do it while I go to school. So she actually talked to me. And of course, Jane actually talked to me. But the lady running the festival, instead of, and the first time I walked past her, she didn't even say anything to me, which Jane seems to think that it's because I've lost weight. I'm still me. I mean, I haven't lost a ton of weight, and I lost that weight, what, a year, two years ago? So, yeah. Um, she says she just doesn't recognize me. I said, oh, okay. So, I'll let it go with that. But then, when I was standing in Jane's booth... Um, I was actually getting ready to go. I had made my rounds and I picked up some pulled pork sandwiches for dinner, um, which were really good. Uh, it was fine. 
you know, but she walks up to me and instead of saying, oh my gosh, it's great to see you again. She looks at me and says, oh, so you decided to grace us with your presence. I had not gone to that festival because it's the end of July. And for those of you who don't know, my daughter's birthday is the same days as that festival always was. So for the four years that we vended there, I skipped my daughter's birthday. Well, I'm not vending there anymore. And you know, it was for personal reasons, but either way, it's none of her business why I wasn't there. And for her to run the festival, and have that attitude towards me, that's a customer just that's lost. I won't go back. Um, I've never felt so just unappreciated. Um, and that was another reason why there was one thing or two things that I had looked at and I was gonna go back by before I left and see if I really wanted them. After that, I didn't even go back by. If you appreciate me, as a customer, I will return. If you don't, and I'm just somebody to be snooty to, I'm not going back. Not going back at all. And I feel really bad because those vendors, they count on her to be the face of that festival because she's the one running it. So that was how she, you know, walked up to me and Jane just said, hey, look who stopped by. And she says, oh, so you decided to grace us with your presence. I don't know. I, that is one of the reasons that we quit going to that festival. Now we still go to, and I still plan on, if they do it, um, last year it went virtual and then it ended up canceled because when it was virtual, people wouldn't commit to classes. The, the lady running it, Jennifer, she's really sweet and she had other things going on and not didn't have the time to stay on everyone. Uh, I think there was three or four of us that went ahead and put our stuff out there and did our class online as we had said we would. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, that we did it anyway. So she, even sent an email saying how much she appreciated us and blah, blah, blah. And just was very thankful for those of us who did do, even though it ended up being canceled because virtual just isn't a very good way to sell wool. You can't feel it. it it's, it's great with the color, but it's very tactile too. So, and if you remember, I bought two bats off of that virtual wool fest and I wasn't happy with them. So yeah, and, and I told you then that I probably would never do that again because I wasn't happy with what I got. The pictures, it was all that with the, it was the artsy fartsy barn and it, and it wasn't billed as that. And it came with little beads and all this stuff. I gave the beads to Jane, let her bead with something and yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it wasn't through the vendor's fault. It was just, you can't see it in person. Pictures don't do things justice. Uh, you can't turn it over and see the inside. It is what it is. But through all of that, me posting my class and all this stuff, she was super appreciative. And the one in Kellyville, acted like, you know, they didn't even want me there. So, yeah. And that's, RJ, I think he nailed it best when he said that fiber festival, if there ain't drama, those ladies aren't happy. <laughs> and so they'll always make something going on, like just, yeah and they create drama where it's unnecessary 
you know, the old antich be nice. It's a lost concept on some of those people down there. I don't know. I, I don't know. It just, um, RJ said the fiber world has a lot of drama. The one up in Wamego doesn't. So maybe it's just that fiber festival and I'm going to choose to stay out of it. Um, I know that unfortunately Jane still bends there and I love her to death. I know she's going to watch this and she gets caught up in it because they direct it at her sometimes and but that's her home um, fiber festival. She's been doing that for years. She was one of the first vendors that started it. So yeah, she sticks it out. I don't have to and I ain't going back and that's what I'll tell her. I'd rather go someplace else and see her, you know, or just go to the house and see her. I'll grab my spinning wheel and go to her house. Hey, this is a day off I got. You know, if she's off, then we're doing it. Um, when I had Mondays off, uh, she'd come by here and we'd have lunch together and spin or crochet or knit or whatever you want to call it anytime. So, and we were doing that like once every other week. And then I changed jobs. So, you know, we just haven't gotten our schedules. She works on days that I'm off and I'm off on days she works. So, uh, and then we were doing the farmer's market together so that we could do that. But it's so hot, no one's coming out. And Jane said that at that the last time she went, it was the first time she'd absolutely had no sales at all. Normally she'll get, you know, a few, which makes it worth, because she's having fun and we're spinning and, and educating people, and which is more our goal anyway. So, yeah. She said those weren't working very well. And it's just the, it has been a hundred and some degrees, like 107 plus heat index. And it's been like moist and raining and hazy. And it's just so humid. It, horrible, horrible. So, uh, you actually can go outside and just gasp for air because it's so dense and humid that you can't get your breath. So, yeah. I'm just taking it easy. I'm working on my Christmas stuff. I am I am still going to do Wamego. I actually thought about um, getting a hold of Jennifer and saying, hey, if you have it this year, let me know and I'll teach again. Um, I like that festival. And I like the people and vendors associated with that. They don't let anything go on that, you know, just no drama, no fuss and no you know, they appreciate you. And Jennifer's never looked at me and said, oh, you decided to grace us with your presence. What does that even mean? You know, if I was the one running that, that thing, I would look at, well, thank you for coming. You know, it's glad to have you back. Even if it is just to, you know, shop. Isn't that good customer service? Just saying. Anyway, okay, I'm off my soapbox now. I'm done with that. You guys have seen everything, uh, including Worm. He's growing like a weed. Uh, he got his shots yesterday, so last night he was actually nipping at us. Like, if you touch that area, he, he acted like it hurt. So, and we know with puppy shots, sometimes they can be sore. Um... He's got one lady that does it at the office and he's got one more round and it's going to include like his rabies and his, all of his stuff. And he's fully vaccinated from everything from lepto, distemper, parvo, border tail, even influenza. Um, he can't, you know, I don't want him getting doggy collar. He's around other dogs. He's around those of us that work with other dogs. Um, and I don't want him getting contaminated with anything so he's even had his bordetella which is a nasal nasal stuff that keeps you uh keeps him from getting kennel cough and that so and hitch has recovered from his oh that's something i don't know that i put in last week's so hitch has recovered from his vetting he went last week and if you remember I think I podcast on Tuesday last week, and this is Tuesday this week. So Wednesday he went to get his shots and that, and I'll try to make this short, but pretty much we were going to foster him, get him vetted, find him a new home. He was going to, you know, he's just too wild. 
he's literally doing this. <laughs> and he just, I don't know. Him and the puppy play together really well. Uh, you have to tell him easy a lot. If you run the vacuum, he still poos and pees all over himself. If he's in the house, he has to be outside. Um, if the lawnmower's running, he has to be inside. Uh, he gets real nervous. He loses his faculties about him when he does. So, anyway, took him. He is fully vaccinated, got a rabies shot, good for three years. Um, did a pre-up blood draw because he was going to get neutered. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I have a tickle right there. Um, did a pre-op blood draw so that he, we could make sure he was healthy. And that blood work came back and it looked great. But, yeah, there's a but. So, he has a heart murmur. Murmurs are rated from zero, uh, one to six. Um, his is a high four low five and they took uh radiographs of his heart and sent them off to be read you know read by a cardiologist a dog cardiologist so wednesday i came home i was crying i Here's the thing, he was a rescue. He was supposed to be temporarily housed here and rehomed. He has behavior, behavioral issues. Normally you can correct those, let find the right family that will deal with them as that's good for him. If they have medical issues, a lot of times you can get them rehomed like Storm, um, the horse. She found a lovely home. They understand that she can never, ever not have good nutrition. You have to pay a little bit more. Her feed's going to cost a little bit more, blah, blah, blah. So they get that. So if they have medical issues, you normally can find them a home. It takes a little longer. If they have behavioral issues, you normally can find them a home. But if they have medical and behavioral, when you're doing rescue, the likelihood of finding a family that will take on both is zero to none. Um, they normally can handle one thing or the other, but very few people will take on both. So as a rescue, if he has too many issues, you have to decide, you know, where you're going to go from there. So adopt out or euthanize. That's your two choices. And I made this choice for years at the shelter. Okay. Is this adoptable? Is this not? Well, with his behavioral issues, he was adoptable. With behavioral and health issues, he's not. And uh, me, I actually thought that if I can't get, you know, I just had him on that rescue line that, you know, this is how it happens. Um, I came home crying because that meant he was going to be euthanized. I mean, if you can't adopt him out, I didn't really want to keep him. So, euthanasia was the only choice. And his heart, the vet looked at me and she says, it's only going to get worse. He's just three at the most. And his heart is only going to get worse. He doesn't have heartworms, so he's on treatment for that, or prevention for that, because if he ever does get heartworms, it's going to kill him. And it's very, very painful. So, we're not doing that. But, talked to roommate, came home. I got off early that day. I was just upset. Just, yeah. Came home. He actually had to be sedated to have his nails trimmed. And all his vet, like Moose, um, used to have to be because he's so anxious. And then he spent the whole afternoon, once he was back here, he was just so relieved. He went to puking everywhere. Um, and he hadn't eaten because, for sedation, you don't feed them. So he's, yeah, all over. I took care of him all day. Cried a lot because my options were looking pretty grim. 
and when roommate got here, we talked and we just decided that because he doesn't look sick, he doesn't, I mean, there's not a, a gaping wound you can't fix. There's not a, you know, it, you can't see that the heart isn't. So here's the conclusion that we've come up with. Some people are, some people are going to agree and some are going to disagree with my thing. Okay. Um, we are going to keep Hitch here at this house. This is where he'll live out his days, period. We have a routine. We can handle all of his little glitches, all that stuff. But on the other hand, the only thing that he is going to be treated for from here on out, fleas, ticks, and internal parasites. He's not going back to the vet anymore. We're still waiting on the radiographs to tell us how bad, how long, how whatever, but yeah, it's the reason that heart murmur is the reason that he sleeps so soundly. And that heart murmur is the reason that he spooks in his sleep, you know, um, because his heart just, he's not getting enough oxygen and he's almost like comatose sometimes when he sleeps, but <coughs> That said, the best we can pray for is um, him to just go to sleep one night and not wake up. How long does he have? Nobody knows. So, I've given him a better life than he had. And he is going to live it out here and he'll be buried here. So, that's the way it's going to be. But he's not going to town. I'm going to quit. Tate trying to socialize him, trying to get him to ride in cars nicely and all that stuff. Um, yeah, he's, when I take him, even when I took him to the office a couple of times that I did, he'd try and slip the collar and just get away. He'd panic in the parking lot. So, yeah. But no, um, anytime I go on vacation, RJ stepped up and he said, Mom, he can stay at the farm. He's used to that. He can ride in the car nicely to get to the farm. He understands the farm. Um, RJ's okay with that, and he says, but just don't be upset if I call and say, hey, he didn't wake up one day. I said, nope, but he is here to stay. It is what it is. Um, I just didn't want to have to put him to sleep, and there's no adopting him out, not with all that stuff going on. So, all right, I'm wrapping this up. I will see you next week. Thank you for watching, and I appreciate each and every one of you. So, don't forget to thumbs up, like, subscribe. I never asked for that, but I was told I should. So I will talk to y'all later. Have a great day and a great week. God bless.